And can we welcome up Jimmy and Hannah onto the stage, please, guys? How did you how did you come across this character uh, and this and this little almost community you know this kind of isolated community? How did you find these guys? Okay. Well, um, Hannah had worked with so our um, our producer who worked on the film was Abby, um, and Hannah had worked on, with her on films before. Um, you'd done you'd done a playaway project. I don't know if you want to talk yeah, a few um, community projects. We worked together on them. Yeah. Um, and so. She had told us about the shop. We'd kind of heard about it for two years. She'd been telling us about the shop and kind of what it it was. It's it's a kind of I think it's fair to say it's kind of notor notorious minor celebrity kind of status in Portsmouth. Um, and so when we found out that it was closing, it was kind of like, well, this is the only opportunity. We need to talk about it. As far as we were aware, there hadn't been a film made about it before, and so we needed to get down there. We needed to talk to him, understand what the shop was about and why it was there and kind of, yeah, it went on from there. And, and did, it, did, it sort of, did it surprise him that somebody actually wanted to come and, and make a film about this? No, not at all. <laughs> um, in fact, the week before we'd gone, um, I think ITV Local had gone down and they'd, they'd done a very small segment on him. Um, he's, He'd obviously been documented before, and he he was very happy to be on camera. He he thrived off of it essentially. He thrived off of attention, and so you know it was um it was a game with him essentially. He wasn't surprised. He enjoys telling stories. I mean, you can see he that absolutely loves telling stories, um, and it becomes a maze. I think like hopefully from the editing, you'll see that he will start talking about one thing, and then he'll diverge off to another thing, and like you lose track, and then you can't get brought back in. And we were we were quite uh, we really wanted to represent that in the film. We wanted to have the kind of like you get let off and then you get brought back in and maybe he'll jump off and then come back again and that's what it's like being in the shop. It's twists and turns and not just because it's so full and it's a labyrinth inside, but speaking to him is like a labyrinth as well. So yeah, and then, and and how did the the kind of community of different people that. Uh, that frequent the shop. How did you, how did they feel when you were approaching them and talking to them? Obviously, that that kid. I mean, <laughs> I mean that kid. I I grew up in. Well, I spent a lot of time in Portsmouth anyway, and like so, to me that that kind of isn't surprising. But it's funny to see that on camera, like that kid talking about how to carve a bullet to blow off a man's head. Um, <laughs> uh, there's yeah. I mean, it's, it's a military town. Um, you got the navy. You got the army there. Um, but how did how did they respond to to being talked to to being filmed? Generally, really well. I mean, people, the boy, uh, incidentally, we saw him the first time we were there. He walked past, um, he was wearing a gas mask um, when he walked past us, and, but he was walking out of the door, and so we didn't get a chance to film him. And we're like, oh my God, how did we miss that? Like, he left, we've missed our big opportunity. Um, and it became, having the boy there became a really nice thread where we could have Nick as the old vanguard and the boy becoming the new generation of people who are interested in it or passionate about it. And then we were so lucky because he was there the next day, or sorry, the next week. Um, maybe not so lucky, maybe he's there every week. But, um, uh, but we could talk to him and yeah, it, it worked out well. Um, other people, the man who's wearing the hat um, towards the beginning, beginning of it, um, He's there maybe every three months, and he, fortunately for us, he, he makes films himself. Um, I think that, I think a large part of it is that you can watch it and think that the people are happened upon or not so aware, but I think that they're also very conscious. It's always a two-way thing when you're making films. They are understanding of who you are, your understanding of who they are, and they're they're quite savvy. So the guy in the hat, he had a production company in London, but he also happened to be very interested in military as well. And so he was sussing out us as much as we were when we were talking to him. Um, he was a reenactor, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Um, he was. Uh, he was going down to do a re He was there that day to buy ambulance equipment and a nursing uniform for his wife because they were going... 
um, because they were reenacting a. Um, <laughs> this has made it sound way more saucy than I meant to be. Um, they were reenacting a drive of the unknown soldier for, uh, who had needed um, medical attention from Flanders to somewhere else. Um, well, you can tell us the rest of the story, but I think everybody else has already imagined it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Have we got any questions at this point uh, for either of the... Yep. Did you ever get the old guy to show any emotion? He was really stoic in the way he was like, a policeman could never show any emotion. I'm just wondering if he actually you know, got upset at any point. So just for the camera there and the rest of the audience, um, did you manage to get uh, the shop owner to ever display any emotion? He sounds like a very stoic character. Did you ever get him to display any emotion? Not really, no. He was... Um he didn't show much emotion at all, did he? No, he... Uh, he... <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He, he, did, he did show emotion at some point. Um, there was a period where he thought he was going to close the shop, mm -hmm. and then he wasn't able to... The deal went through, and he wasn't able to sell it on, um, and he was quite upset that day. Um, yeah, there was one day. So he, he was, um, but he kind of, he basically said, please don't put this in the film, and we had to respect that. Um, he's a very controlled person, isn't he? Yeah, he, he wanted to give the impression of being controlled, and that was a very important part of him. And I think that, you know, uh, emotion can also become for him, like, being more worked up about something, and if he, there's a, a part of it where he's kind of, he became he be, would become more anxious, let's say. So if there were people in the shop and he needed to call one of his staff to say, oh, go and sort them out, that was more him expressing his emotion than other things. It was kind of when he showed a lack of control, let's say, that was his emotion coming through a bit more than explicitly kind of happiness or sadness. And have you, have you guys shown him the film? Has he seen it? How did he respond to that? Yeah, he got um final sign off of the film. <laughs> um, it was quite important to us that he he liked the film and was happy with it. Um, yeah, he he liked it, didn't he? He was happy. Yeah. He was happy. Any plans to show it in Portsmouth or like how how did anybody else did anybody else from the community react to it? We would like to have a mini screening in Portsmouth. Everyone that was involved in the film could get a chance to see it. Not completely finished. Unfortunately, in the last few months, well, after we finished the film and after he retired, Nick became quite unwell, um, and so we had planned to have a screening with him, but that's had to be put slightly on the back burner now while he recovers, so we're kind of delaying that until he's in a position. He's got probably more important things to worry about at the moment than the film. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. So, But hopefully on the horizon for that. And are there any other questions? Yep, fire away, in the middle. So what has happened to all of the stock in the shop and what's happened to the, uh, the building? Well, uh, probably unsurprising to most people, it's been turned into flats. Um, um, the, I think um, a large part of his business, and, and again, this is kind of, uh, to come back to an earlier point, a lot of his business was, there was the shop front, and so it was quirky, and this might be, de hopefully not demystifying too much, but the shop front was a kind of quirky frontage to it. But um, he did a lot of stuff for renting in bulk, large-scale military uniforms to TV, to films, and that's how he made the majority of his money. Um, so he had large buyers who were interested in taking on the kind of bulk of the uniforms. Um, the buttons, he had something like 10,000 buttons in the uh, back room, um, and that was kind of bought out in bulk by other military suppliers. Um, and then after that, there was kind of the bits and bobs that he just kind of shipped out to you know, antique stores or kind of other reclaim type stuff. Um, so, and, and that was kind of part of the thing of, we obviously in the film you don't see the shop being emptied, and we weren't actually all that interested, possibly controversially for 
some feedback we've heard, but we weren't all that interested in showing it literally being cleared out. You don't see a van coming and it being put in the box and taken away because because of the way that he dealt with it and it was quite um it felt like quite a big thing with him. He didn't have the kind of and now we're clearing it out. It was still very transactional and that was kind of part of him that he was very transactional despite the fact that it obviously meant a big deal to him and that was kind of part of the conflict in his personality of and I think that goes back to the kind of emotion of there wasn't this big outpouring and he was very guarded in that way. And hence the title. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, transactional, nothing sacred. <laughs> if he can sell it, he will. And yeah. Excellent. Um, are there any other questions for these guys? Um, okay, I mean, if not, maybe you can tell us where we can expect to see a bit more, where can we find more of your work, and, and, and what can we expect to see in the future? Yeah, so um, this is on our Vimeo page. We don't, have a, we don't have a dedicated website for the film yet. Um, but yeah, if you want to watch it again uh, or see our other work, it's on Vimeo. Um, and we're currently at the very beginnings of starting to film uh, our next project. Um, it's still following a similar theme of collectors. Um, this time it's focused, this one, the previous one was very much about the end stage of collection and militaria. And the next one is around <laughs> another slightly obscure thing, but mineral collectors. Um, and so, but in a kind of people who are starting out in their be the beginning of their collection um, or in the midst of their collection. So that's kind of part of a theme, hopefully, of collection topics. So, yeah. Excellent. Cool. Well, give these guys a round of applause. Thank you very much. <laughs>